things to it. Mm. Was not working, was not transacting properly. That's the problem. Because people tend to do NDS. Yes, and yes, it's not, it's not the answer. It's just so Ben, basically what happened last Friday was Ringgit non-deliverable uh, forward rates actually dropped to about 4.587, close to 4.6, which is 3.4 percent week on week lower. And why was the panic? Everybody was selling so badly. Why was the panic? And it's not just in Ringgit. Across Asia, we saw all currencies dropping as well. Actually, if you look back, um, after Trump won, you saw a huge spike in US Treasury yields. You know, uh, This was up um, uh, 30 to 40 basis points, depending on the maturity. And this was a huge jump, uh, like more than two standard deviations. And the Malaysian uh, MGS uh, yields also started to move up just as much. But this move wasn't really reflected in the ringgit immediately after Trump won. Um, and it's really reflective of new inflation expectations. People expect Trump to spend huge amounts of money and cut taxes, and this will require him to, to issue huge amounts of uh, US treasuries. So um, the effect took a few uh, days to, to, to kick in into the ringgit when foreign funds actually managed to start selling and they started to try and exit the market. No, the thing that I don't really get is um, when Donald Trump uh, say that he wants to cut tax and he wants to spur, spur the economy, what's the, what's the relation between US Treasury yields and MGS Treasury yields and how does this actually affect uh, Ringgit? So the US Treasury yields um, affect the Malaysian uh, MGS because they move in tandem. Okay? They, need to, they need to maintain a spread. So if US Treasury yields move uh, up, so do the MGS. And the way yields move up is when people sell the bonds. So bonds are being sold both in uh, the US and in Asia. And when people sell the bonds, they then want to convert the currency. They want to take the money out of the country. So when they did that, they started to sell the ringgit. Yeah. But of course, Trump is going to come soon into the office uh, in January 20th, which is uh, about two months now. And he wants to make America great again. Um, so you actually spoke to some of the uh, research houses. Like, What did they tell you? RHB and also Alliance Bank, what did they say about Ringgit? Um, I think in the near term, it's going to be very volatile because people are not sure what the Ringgit is worth, right? But um, when you look longer term, um, Trump's policies aren't going to kick in for may maybe even half a year, maybe to a year. Yeah. It's not going to be so quick for him to start spending money. He's only going to come to office um, next year and even then he doesn't have the full reign to do whatever he wants, you know? I think what happened on uh, Thursday night when the Ringgit stopped trading onshore, mm. then the offshore um, NDFs started to run. You know, it went all the way up to almost 4.4. So when banks woke up on uh, Friday morning and they saw this huge spread from 4.28 uh, all the way up to 4. Point, almost 4.40, um, then they had, to, they had to decide what to do then. And then um, it would seem that Bank Negara gave some instruction that prevented the banks from trading too high. Mm. And that created a bit of a panic in the market, you know, because then, um, we couldn't really figure out what the ringgit was worth onshore because they weren't transacting properly. Mm. The banks weren't willing to buy the ringgit above uh, Thursday's range-bound rate. Of course, we had a press conference with uh, Bank Negara Malaysia on yeah. Friday because they were talking about uh, GDP growth yeah. third quarter. It was good at 4.3% uh, against 4.1% growth. Yeah. But I don't see uh, Bank Negara taking a lot of cautionary uh, measures on, on ringgit. What, what do you think? Well, the central bank really only has one tool to manage the currency and that's direct intervention to buy up the ringgit and use their foreign currency reserves. Mm. But um, Bank Negara didn't do that. Um, and even when you do direct intervention, it's only to smooth out volatility. Yeah. You can't defend the currency at an unreasonable level. Then uh, you have what, a repeat of 97. Um, so what Bank Negara did was a bit uncharacteristic, trying to manage the uh, bank's uh, offer rates to buy the ringgit. Mm. Yeah. And I think this is reflective of the fact that sentiment is driving the currency more than fundamentals. Because mm. we did have a, a good set of GDP numbers. You yeah. know, it it right. was much better than expectations. Um, but at the same time, um, people aren't looking at fundamentals. They're trying to guess what um, Trump's uh, presidency means you know, for the US and for global financial markets. But when I look at Ringgit this morning, it's, uh, it came back to 4.31 this morning. Yep. And they say Ringgit is still very weak because of low oil prices, because of Chinese yuan dropped to a six-year low, this kind of thing. But you, um, what, did the, what did RHB told you about Ringgit? Are they expecting Ringgit to rebound strongly in the near future or still remain weak? 
I think uh, in the near term, we're just going to see a lot of volatility in the, the ringgit. Um, mm. A lot of uh, news flow coming out can, can move the ringgit. But what is its fundamental value? Um, RHB says it's probably about 4.1 based on the real uh, foreign exchange. Uh, you know? And what uh, we got to realise is that sentiment for the ringgit is so weak. Mm. You know? Fundamentals are going to take a back seat anyway. And also one more thing, uh, Ben, because um, ringgit is so weak, like uh, what we talked about just yeah. now. So what are the things, what are the catalysts that can actually push uh, ringgit up at this moment? I think uh, catalysts can push the ringgit up. We're going to have to see bond yields come back down. Mm -hmm. um, uh, like it or not, um, a lot of money has been taken out of fixed income and it needs to go somewhere. They're, they're not selling US uh, treasuries and buying Asian bonds. They're not selling Asian bonds and buying US treasuries. They've sold both. So the money has got to come back into the market sometime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For more on the stories, pick up a copy of The Edge Weekly at all good newsstands.